Hello, welcome back to Cinema Daily US. I'm Chiara Spagnoli Gabardi and I will be sharing my thoughts with you on the second season of Bridgerton that has just been released on Netflix. As you all well know, this series is the brainchild of Chris Van Dusen and is produced by Shondaland, the pioneering storytelling company founded by Shonda Rhimes that we have all grown to love thanks to award-winning series such as Grey's Anatomy and Scandal. In this case, Bridgerton is inspired by Julia Quinn's best-selling novels. And after the first season followed the coming of age of Daphne Bridgerton, played by Phoebe Denevore, this second season focuses on the eldest of the siblings, Anthony, played by Jonathan Bailey, who is heir to the title and is in pursuit of his Viscountess. Um, what can we say about Bridgerton in general? Well, definitely what might have appeared as a mere nod to Hollywood's new code of conduct does instead come across as a successful operation. The audience is definitely aware that this is not a historical drama, but one that celebrates a wider sense of representation that embraces all ethnicities. And of course, we love it because it is enriched by that, that touch of flamboyance through the stupendous costumes, the extravagant wigs, and the outstanding locations, of course. Therefore, the strength of this series undoubtedly has been in its ambitious way of rewriting history. We are catapulted to a Regency era where the aristocratic milieu is multiracial. Uh, as we saw in the first season, Daphne marries the Duke, a man of colour, and this time round, the Viscount falls in love with a lady of Indian descent. So let us take a closer look at what happens during this second season. Well, Anthony meets the beautiful Edwina Sharma, played by Charithra Chandran, but it is the older sister Kate, played by Simon Ashley, who will take his breath away. Most of the story, I must say, plays a familiar tune to what we saw in the first season. There isn't uh, much surprise, there aren't any narrative plots that are, uh, are totally mind-blowing. And, of course, the absence of uh, Roger Jean Page playing the Duke of Hastings, along with too many foreseeable denouements, weaken the entire new season. The first season, uh, The Duke and I, created a lot of buzz also for its audacious and uh, steamy scenes of passion, uh, which is something that is extremely diluted in the second season. But this is not the only aspect that is more wishy-washy in um, the season called The Viscount Who Loved Me. For instance, in the first season, all spectators were kept hanging and hooked by having to figure out who Lady Whistledown was. But in this later season, all viewers are aware of the identity of the sharp-tongued gossip writer, and even if the mystery persists amongst the characters of 19th century London, spectators have nothing to discover and the narrative in general isn't gripping at all. I must admit the acting is good. The British Austen-like dialogue is exquisite. But the, the, but the series tries to be a people pleaser on so many current issues and I feel in some way it fails to fulfill them and there's one above all that sort of r rubbed me the wrong way because we have this uh, heroine Kate Sharma who should embody uh, the empowered female who despises the damsel in distress cliche but she ends up being saved by her valiant knight. And I'm not against that portrayal of stories in cinema or series. But what is irritating is that throughout these eight episodes, um, the series preaches in, in one way and ultimately it turns against its own exhortations. However, there are a few positive takeaways uh, from this rather flawed, I would dare say, second segment of Bridgerton more than in the actions of the characters, in the words of wisdom they share. And there's one above all that is pronounced by Penelope, who that, that really impressed me and touched me. And she says how we should allow ourselves some private moments in order to face reality armed with our reveries. 
which I feel is something that every one of us can relate to in terms of finding comfort in our fantasies to be able to confront the hardships in life. Um, but besides these few moments in which the characters express compelling thoughts, there is nothing captivating or groundbreaking in the second season. This is probably why there are rumours that, that, that there might not be a season three. Julia Quinn's novels, uh, as a matter of fact, continue following up on the individual stories of each of the Bridgerton siblings, which are eight in total, all in alphabetical order. So we have Anthony, Benedict, Colin, Daphne, Eloise, Francesca, Gregory and Yacint. And so far, of course, we've seen only two of these stories being completely explored, Anthony's and Daphne's. But of course, there's plenty of material provided by Julia Quinn that would give room to many more seasons. But we are uncertain if the third and fourth and so and so on will see the light. Uh, because I must say already this season has been stretched out in eight episodes and I could have easily enjoyed it as just one single film. What I can add is, although uh, it remains uncertain if we shall see more from the Bridgertons, something that grasped my attention is how Netflix ordered a limited spin-off series from Shonda Rhimes, which will follow the rise and love life of young Queen Charlotte. In Bridgerton, she is played by Golda Rochevelle, and her character was inspired by the real Queen Charlotte, who may be the first mixed race or black British royal, as attested by the research of a historian. So this story definitely would be a compelling one to me, but we shall have to wait and see uh, when, uh, when the time comes. Other than this, to sum it all up, Bridgerton, the Viscount who loved me, earns a very generous C plus on my end. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Please get back to us in your comments. And uh, this is Chiara Spagnoli Gabardi for Cinema Daily US. Ciao!